Welcome back. I finally broke down and purchased a Brix refractometer. I'd like to thank my Patreon supporters for helping to make this channel possible. My top supporters are TrueAquaponics.com and GlassBottleOutlet.com. Make sure you pay them a visit. If you're not sure what this is for, it's to measure the sugar level of the berries or the plants that you have. And for strawberries, which I'm mostly curious about right now, um, the average is about 10 or so. So we'll see what uh, we come up with in this crop. We'll try one of these. It's not perfectly red, so I'm sort of curious to see what they're like. We're not, not fully ripe. So for our sample set, I have one that's not quite ripened yet. It's still a little white or green on the bottom. This one is just about ripe. I would have harvested that one anyways. This one is well ripened. And well, this one, it's way overripe, but I'll be curious to see uh, what it does. The meter isn't complex at all. Basically, you put your sample right on here and look in this end and it tells you what the sugar level is. So first we'll try out the underripe one. I'm just gonna take a taste out of each one first just so I can do a little taste test with each one. Still good strawberry. And then just squeeze a little bit of juice into the area. Close the little flap and take a peek inside. So that's reading 11. It's a good berry. I could pick these earlier. Okay, on to the second one that's a little more ripe. That's also pretty good. It's a little bit smaller berry, so I don't know if the size makes any difference or not. That one's reading ten and a half. Still not bad. On to the one that looked like it was perfectly ripe. That one's a good one. Funny, that's about the same. Ten and a half. On to our overripe one. Definitely overripe. Wow, that one is at seven. So that's not good at all. Now seeing how a little sugar was in that overripe one, I'm now curious to see what a extra underripe one looks like. So let's try this one out. Definitely a little more tart. Needs a little extra squeezing, but not as juicy. Huh. That's just shy of 11. I've procrastinated making this video and I now have tomatoes available so we're going to test out some of these tomatoes. This variety is called inappropriately a Mexican midget. I'm not sure why it's called that but it's an heirloom seed and I didn't name it. This one I don't recall a name. It starts with an R and it's very long and I'll put the label on the screen somewhere. And my favorite is this Roma variety. Again, I can't recall the name off the top of my head, so I'll put a label down below. So I'm guessing that this is going to be the sweetest, so we're going to have a little showdown between the three tomatoes. First up is the Mexican midget. And that's a reading of nine and a half. All right, next up is the mystery one that starts with an R. That one's pretty low at six. Last up is a Roma, which is my favorite. That's at about 10. The numbers were slightly affected by the ripeness. I was very surprised about that overripe one being so low, but overall we're averaging around 10 or so, so I'm happy with that. 
Um, on the outro, I'm going to do a quick test on my lettuce just as a curiosity to see what that looks like. I don't have any other crops. It's too early in the season right now. And once again, I wanted to thank you for watching. We'll try one green leaf and one red leaf. Very little water in the stem. It's pretty warm today, so the lettuce is already wilted. Probably if I did this first thing in the morning, it'd be much easier. That one's four. <coughs>